Okay, Lump Angie, ready? So, that's not water, that's sweat. It is a hot day. And what did I decide to do on a day when the heat index is near 100? Scout the front yard. I just let it get away from me. I came out of regulation with PGR, and I just, the, it just grows so damn fast once you come out of regulation, and I couldn't keep up with it. So I scalped it down, not down to dirt, and I'll show you that in a minute. I'm gonna give you an update back here on the zoysia. I'm gonna show you a project I got going on on the side lot. But, see if I can get out of the sun here a little bit so you can see. I'll have to go from different angles, there we go. Here's the zoysia. It is looking good. I was food feeding it um, an organic fertilizer. And right here, if you guys remember in a previous video, I plugged this and man, it is really coming in nice. Now, zoysia is not a very fast growing grass. Understand that if you do this Bermuda, it's gonna grow in a lot quicker. But look at all that growth. Everywhere that you see a round circle like that, like that size right there, that is where I put a plug in. And then this area right there, that wasn't from a plug, but that is growing in really nice. If I had a good solid two months of growing season left, this is August the, I don't know, it's the middle of August. So this isn't gonna grow in by the end of the season, but still looks good. I'm gonna show you this over here. This is the donor um, garden that I take the plugs out of. Look how much shade I got right now. Now, a lot of this bare area you're gonna see is from taking plugs out of it in various places. But look at all the shade, how it is still growing. Is it thick and lush? No, but still. Zeon zoysia in the shade. That's crazy. This is Tall Turf Type Fescue, the Rebels brand. Why did I do that? Because take a look at the perimeter. There's a lot of shade. So, that's the backyard. Let's go up here and I'm gonna show you a project I'm working on. Now, before I do this, I'm gonna preface that when I moved in here, all of this was stripped down bare Georgia red clay. No topsoil because behind this gate is a hill that slopes down and it washed out everything. The sidewalk wasn't here, which helps me divert water. And I've had to build this up the topsoil and different layers of different type of sod, seeing what would catch. This is the best, but this problem right here, now this, this is not a showpiece by any means of the imagination back here. But I put in the railroad ties, some four by fours, there's gravel underneath this. Um, I've got some paver stone here and all that is to divert the water to go that way and there's a dry creek bed back there maybe I don't know 50 yards so the water's been rushing down through here I had to divert it in front of each one of these um, um, railroad ties or timbers is a um, I want to say French drain but not really it's not, it doesn't have the tubing it's got all the gravel and everything this is water diversion. I'm not looking to capture all of it. But this um, year I decided to go ahead and start dumping all of my clippings every time I cut right here. To build this up, it's still gonna be, uh, it's still gonna allow the water to penetrate and move, but it's gonna slow it down and to divert it off there to the side. What I wanna show you is crazy. Look at this right here. I'm gonna get down so you can see it. This Bermuda grass growing up. That's from clippings. Now, when people tell you that Bermuda will grow on anything, it really will. You could grow this on cement, but this is just from clippings. And I'm gonna take you up here to some runners. Look at these runners. And they're all over the place, filling in. It looks really good. Now, in addition to this, I had a lot of sand and dirt that I dumped over here at the beginning of the season to try to build this area up. And so I smothered some of what was down here growing in this grass. If I hadn't have done that, it makes me wonder what I'd be looking at going down through there. It's never gonna fill up, like look over there at the shade. It's never gonna fill in, I mean, with uh, Bermuda grass, but still just the fact that it can grow there and it will help some, with some erosion problems that I have had. And if you look at this right here, you'll see some uh, mold right there growing in or fungus. But anyways, erosion problems growing down through there. This area here, I have not done anything on this but pre-emergent. This was supposed to be the dog park area where the dog came over and did its business. 
up. My wife gets scared of the dark and don't want to come over here with him. And she's got him used to going over there in the pine straw area and doing his business. Anyways, my point is I've done nothing to this beyond pre-emergent. It gets no water. It gets no fertilizer. It gets no nutrients, nothing. And it just amazes me on what Bermuda can do. Does it look good? No. It's, it, I mean, it doesn't look good to me. It's uh, not filled in. It's not thick, but... That's what I've gotten from just cutting it with a sharp blade as often as I cut the front yard. So, I don't know. Just surprises me how good that that looks. Now, I came out here at the beginning of this past week and I ran a verticutter through the front yard. Why did I do that? I was getting a lot of browning that I did not like in the lawn. A lot of leggy wood looking stalks in the, in the lawn from it growing a little bit higher. What I should have done when I verticut it was gone ahead and done the scalp then. But I thought the verticut would um, solve my problem. When I first did the verticut, it looked awesome. I took a lot of brown out of it. I took off a lot of uh, debris from down under the surface canopy of the grass. But initially it looked great. But as the week went on, that brown look was just there. And I started cutting and I, just, I did not like it. That's the good part about Bermuda, because if you screw it up, or you think you screwed it up, you really haven't, you can do just about anything to Bermuda that's gonna grow back. Now, you can't come out on Bermuda in the middle of the season and spray Roundup on it, spill gas on it, spill oil on it. You can't do all that, but it will rebound well from a summer scalp. This is my third scalp of the year. Beginning of the season, the day after the 4th of July, July the 5th, and then today, it's mid-August, and this has got to be, I think, the 15th, I don't know. Um, and it's going to come back. I didn't take this down to the dirt. Um, I just needed to go a notch below where I wanted to maintain this at. I must say that again. I took it a notch below, cut it shorter than the level I want to maintain my cut at. So, if I want to maintain my lawn at a 2, then I'm going to scalp it at a 1. If I'm gonna maintain it at a one, I'm gonna scalp it at a zero. And it's gonna grow back in, it's gonna be hardy and thick, and it's gonna look good. I identified a low spot when I was cutting, scalping. And so that gave me the opportunity to drop a little sand right there and level that out. Um, but what am I gonna do? I put some 3207, I believe, on the yard. Um, and I'm gonna pound it with water. I'm done, I'm fixing to be done watering it for the day now. Um, but I'm gonna pound it with the water in the mornings at the hottest part of the day for probably 10 minutes over the next week. It will take probably, it just matters, humidity, um, heat being high right now, maybe quicker, but generally I would think two weeks complete recovery. With the heat, the humidity, it may be a week. But, pound it with the water, I got the furt down, it's already down in the soil, um, and so now we just wait for that recovery. Why did I do it again? Because I started getting brown streaks, uneven cuts, mower floating, doing all sorts of crap. So, go back to the basics, which you did at the beginning of the season to make it look good. Give it a short haircut and let it grow back into where you want to maintain it. That's it, so I gave you an update on the zoysia, I gave you an update on the side lot, the dog park, and the front yard. And that's it. And this is Bermuda Brian.